this world that this church sits empty here this morning that it should because there are some who have lost all hope. That's why people have a tendency to go towards addiction. That's why alcohol and drugs become so appealing. Because why should you care about anything else if you've lost hope? You know, the only relief they feel they can get is to somehow become inebriated and, 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 and unsober in their mind because their reality is too hard to comprehend and to deal with. Others slip into depression because of a lack of hope. Others lose all self-control because of a lack of of hope that they just throw all caution to the wind. What would cause someone to take their own life? What would cause someone to commit suicide? I tell you, I believe it's because they've lost hope. What would make a man put a gun to his head knowing that he's leaving behind two beautiful children or several sons and a wife? Why would a man put a needle in his arm or take pills or hang himself knowing that he's hurting so many people. It's simply this, that they have lost all hope. They have no, no understanding that the future can be any better. And I want to challenge you today to understand this world is full of people who have lost hope. Your family members, some of them have lost hope. Your co-workers have lost hope. There are people in our church today that hope is fading away from them. And they don't know, Brother Murray, if they're going to be able to make it any further in this thing that we call life. What is hope? What is this thing that, preacher, you're talking about that is the only ray of light to somebody that is in the dark hours of their life? I understand that the definition of hope in its purest form is trust and reliance and expectation of fulfillment or success or one said of victory. If you believe that you can trust God, if you believe that you can rely on God, you can come to an understanding that hope says that it may be dark and it may be lonely and it may be difficult, but I trust and believe in the Lord my God that somewhere at the end of this tunnel, victory is going to come. That somewhere at the end of this night, joy is going to come in the morning. That it's not always going to be like this. I'm telling you, there's been some days that the clouds were dark and the skies were gray. The joy is coming back. The Spirit of the Lord will lift the standard up against the enemy when I struggle. And I know that God is on my side. And I call before me, what do I have to fear in this life? Oh, I feel the Lord of the Holy Ghost here today. Somebody give me words. Hallelujah. We have hope. What kind of hope does the believer have? Well, if you're a believer, you have hope that God is our refuge. I preached it from this pulpit probably until I'm blue in the face and I probably need to preach it every, at least once a month. That you're going to have trouble. That you're going to have trial in this life. You're going to bury people you didn't think you would have to bury. You're going to get doctor's reports that you didn't think you had to get or that you would never hear. You're going to find out on your job that sometimes that secure job is gone. You're going to have trouble in your marriage. You're going to have difficulties with your children. But I want to tell you what keeps us hoping, what keeps us believing, as that this word tells us that God is our fortress, He is our refuge, He is our shield, He is our comforter, He is a shelter over our head, He is a safe harbor in time of the storm. And whatever I'm facing today, I've got a God that is a refuge that I can run to. I've got a God I can rely in. I've got a God. Then whom shall I fear? I want to tell you, you have nothing to fear. You say, well, Pastor, the doctor said I have cancer. Cancer is nothing to fear. Because if I know this word correctly, that there's a healing day coming. Out, and that cancer is going to lie because he has to keep the dead hell in the grave. And cancer will not have the final say. And disease, heart disease will not have the final say. The afflictions of this world do not have the final say. And I don't care how many PhDs are on the wall of your doctor. He does not have the final say because cancer may eat my body on this earth. But I'm telling you, I'm going to get a glorified body because I'm going to a place who's pure and never is the Lord God Almighty. And there I'll have healing and deliverance and no more sickness and dying for eternity. God is the final answer. He's the refuge. He is the final answer. So 
to whom shall I fear? Amen. You know, we sit here and I, we say that, you know, God is, uh, is our refuge. And he holds tomorrow in the palms of his hand. Uh, but yet we are worrying ourselves to death uh, over the, the affairs of this life. Uh, we're worrying ourselves to death over the things that we're going to face. Uh, either God is God or he's not. Uh, either God is on the throne this morning or he is not. But I tend to believe what this book says. Uh, that he is on the throne. Uh, and he is in control. Uh, and he knows my end from my beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that we are to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. That if there is a hope that is laid before the believer that he can grab hold to. What is that hope? That hope is Christ Jesus alone. He is our only hope. He is the only thing that we can lay hold to in turbulent times. He is the only way. He's the only door to get out of this world. Come on now. I said he's the only door. He, there's not many ways to find hope. There's not many hopeful things on this planet. That's the thing that most religions cannot offer you is hope. There's only one that can offer hope. And hope comes in the form of Jesus Christ. Notice I told you today that he doesn't give us hope. Hope. He is our hope. Let me say that again. He doesn't give me hope. He is my hope. You see, when you're in this life and you're drowning, has anybody ever before ever felt like you were drowning? You ever felt like the circumstances were so hard that you didn't know if you would ever survive it? You didn't think if you could get through it. Life had become so heavy, the pressure so great, that it literally feels like that, that you're suffocating, slapped to death. You don't, you go to bed with a suffocating feeling. You wake up in the morning with a suffocating feeling. You can't bear to hear any more news because you know the only news you've been getting is bad news. And the load seems heavy. You see, just like Peter walking on water in one instant, he went from victoriously walking above the waves uh, to literally drowning and sucking in water. And the only hope that he had was not John in the boat. They could have never got over to him through the storm waves fast enough uh, to pull him. They didn't have a rope that would probably reach that far to bring him in. When he was drowning, the only hope he had was Jesus uh, who was above his problems, uh, that was above his storm. Uh, and while he's gurgling water, Jesus is pulling him up. And I tell you, he learned the lesson then that he is my only hope. I gotta keep my eyes on him. I gotta keep my hope. I want to tell you today, my hope is not in a paycheck. My hope is not in a church. My hope is not in a preacher. My hope is not in an overseer. It's not in a child or a spouse. My hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he alone is my rescue. He alone is my lifeguard. He alone is my help. And there is no one like unto him. When you're drowning in this life. Amen. You see all other hope is temporary. Right. Let, me, let me say that again. All other hope is temporary. Right. That hope that I get a new house is temporary. Hope that I get a better job is temporary. Right. Hope that my health is what is good is temporary. Right. Hope that I can keep my family with me another year is temporary. Right. There is nothing and you hear this pastor today. Nothing in this life that will give you lasting hope. It all fades away. Things, Brother Marvin, I had hope in fell at my feet as if they were dead. People that I had hoped in left me and let me alone and, and broke my heart. Things in this life that I had hoped in seemed to, to fade away into the night. Things that I esteemed so highly crumbled and rusted away. But there is a hope that is not temporary. There is a hope that is eternal. There is a hope that is everlasting. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you understand that the storms of this world will not erode that hope? The things and the rust and the moth of this world will not decay the hope that you have in Jesus. Because I tell you, what Paul learned is I can lose everything. But to die is Christ and is gain. To lose everything is all right as long as I have the hope of glory. Jesus Christ living inside of me. Amen. Hope in this world is temporary. 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. The Bible says there. Follow with me. 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, 
We are of all men most miserable. Do you understand the greatest hope that we have is not in this life? Some of you just wanted Jesus to help you have a better life here. But I'm telling you, this world is miserable. It is wretched and it was wicked. And I'm just hoping to get out of it by the grace of God. But the hope, he, he said, if the only hope you have is to serve Jesus here, then we're still miserable men. We're wasting our time. He said, my hope is not in Christ in this life alone, but it is in the life to come. That he was the first of the resurrection. He's the only begotten of the Father. He overcome death to give you victory over death. And I want to tell you that that eternal hope in life is real. That place called heaven is real. You know what I got to thinking this week? I thought to myself, as Sister Shirley passed, I told the family in the hospice the other night. I said, I can see it now. Her and Gladys done took hands and they're shouting through the streets of glory. I said, it makes me so excited and so happy that they're there together now. And I said, the only disappointment I have is I can't be there with them yet, but I'm on my way. Oh, somebody help me. How do you know you're on your way? It's because my hope is not in this life. I have hope beyond this body and hope beyond this flesh that one day I'll see them again, but I'll see Jesus face to face. Amen. Eternal lasting hope. He said that hope, and I love this, this, this struck me this week. That hope is the anchor of our soul. That hope is what anchors us down. You see, Matthew Henry comment, commented on this, and he said, From this verse, it is an illustration that we are like a ship tossed at sea. That our lives are up and down. Up and down. And down. You know, these people that think, well, if you just sow in my ministry and let me blow on you and put some oil on your head, you're just going to be up all the time. They're liars. Amen. This life is up and down. Amen. You might be up today and way down tomorrow. Yes. And then Tuesday, you may be further down than you've ever been. And then Wednesday, you might be back up again. But we're like a ship tossed at sea. We're up and down. Constantly in danger of being cast away. Constantly in danger of any moment becoming so much in despair that we are shipwrecked. That we don't know where our course is anymore. We don't know how to get where we're going. We, we thought we had life planned out. We thought that we had things together, but so tossed and turned. We don't understand where we are because of the storms of this life. That's why you got to have an anchor. I was reading last night, and as I began to think about an anchor, I got on the internet and began to read a little bit about ships in the midst of storm. That they said there was a couple things I thought were amazing. Said if a large ship is on course, or especially if they're in a channel, and they're trying to make their way up the channel, and the storm comes, that to stay on course, and to keep from being blown onto the shores and being blown out of the channel, that they will drop their anchors, and they will bury them in the bottom. And they will ride out the storm. Another article said that if you are a person who sails, that if you don't practice, even in good weather, how to anchor your boat down, how to drag your anchors on the bottom, that you won't know how to respond when the storm comes. And it's literally life and death for some who are in those boats and those tiny boats. They, they, it is life and death for them to be able to anchor down. And I thought about, you know, that's how this life is. We're, we, we, we know our course. We know our channel. We know we're on the path of righteousness. But yet that doesn't mean that the weather's always nice. That sometimes in the channels of our life, the wind kicks up. And the storm waves are over our heads. And the only way we can survive it is we have to know how to drop down our anchor. And i got to tell you, before the storm comes, you better already know how to use your anchor. You better know who your anchor is. But when you know the anchor and there's hope in your soul that even when the storms come, you can drop anchor and say, I know my anchor is sure. I know my anchor is steadfast. 